Uh, we're going to be starting where we left off last time on uh, the evolution theory. I teach on creation and evolution all over the world and want to set the record straight that the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate and the evolution theory is the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of planet Earth. All right, Jonathan, who's on the phone? We've got Jared on the phone. Jared, back from Sweden? No, no, this is no, no, that's Martin from Sweden. Jared Martin from, from Minnesota? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. <laughs> Grand Upstate. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, uh, I took your bait, gentlemen. You uh, were obviously baiting me to get back on the program. Um, so let's talk about vitamin C again. Now, I looked this up, and the gene is actually called uh, l guano gamma lactone oxidase, right? I don't recall, but I believe that's correct. Okay. This gene is in common between guinea pigs and humans. Is that what you were thinking of when you said hamsters, Jonathan? What's that? It, 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 I'm reading a paper that's talking about it being in common between humans and guinea pigs. Is that what is you were thinking Is this uh, Wesley Ellsbury's paper? Uh, I'm not sure who wrote it. Okay, well, go ahead, anyway. It's, it's, it's just an excerpt. I mean, I can give the reference if you want later. But anyway, what they're saying is, um, yeah, it's in common between humans and guinea pigs, but it's not broken in the same way between human, humans and guinea pigs. The, the real point about vitamin C, that, I mean, that this gene, is that it's exactly the same between chimps and humans. And if you go down the phylogenetic tree of our uh, closest relatives, like the gorillas, the macaques, you start seeing mutations in that gene at exactly the expected mutation rates from the evolutionary theory. Well, that's proof. We all came from a rock. No, Kent, it's not. But uh, are you admitting <laughs> that you were wrong before about this? It's a, you think that's an indication that, of common ancestry. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first place, I think you need to understand the human genome has very small, a very small amount of it has even been analyzed, okay? Number two, if you yeah, look at... this has been analyzed. What's that? Yeah, but this has been analyzed. Okay, if you look at the, the way they determine the similarities, it's usually the melting point as they heat up the DNA and notice what temperature it melts at. No, is it, when they compare specific genes like this, they actually list out the gene. How do they know? They can't even see those genes with a microscope. Um, actually, that's not true, but that's not how they do it anyway. They actually sequence it. How, how do they how do they sequence and and the, and the chimpanzees? I've read about these sequencing machines before. You can you can pull specific parts of DNA into a computer. Do the USB port? Maybe at some point. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. <laughs> I mean, we're literally talking about data. These are bits of data. In fact, it's nibbles because it's ATDC. So it's I know, four it, bits. isn't it? Critical, isn't it amazing how complex these things are? Yeah, we have evolution a two, is amazing. A two bit code for the uh, you know. Uh, off and on for the our, our computers, this is a four four bit code. I know, I know. Yeah, it's you'd almost cool. think. Let's, let's stay on topic though, okay? Okay, but you'd so, almost so, think there was a designer if you didn't know better, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't think there's a designer because uh, I, I want to ask the designer why exactly there are broken parts in different species in exactly the same way. Well, no, that's a good question, but I don't think that's evidence that was, uh, for evolution. And why? I think you're desperate for evidence for your theory is the problem. It's evidence for common ancestry. Well, to you it is. Why is it not evidence for common ancestry to you, if it's not just you being blinded by your own theory? Okay, our golf cart ran over a nail. The front left tire was flat. The neighbor's car across the street was a Ford, uh, and it had a front left tire that went flat. We're not talking about machines. And they, both, they, both have machines? The, they both have the same broken tire. This is proof that they, they both came from a skateboard. I'm telling you, the kid rides a skateboard around here, and I know it evolved into that Volkswagen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like if you found two blueprints for two different types of go-karts, and they were 98% identical blueprints, and then you right. found the flaw at the same exact part of the blueprint. That's a lot closer to what we're talking about. But okay. even then, I would probably object to the analogy because, you know, go-karts don't self-reproduce. And the, the, who built the blueprint? Who made the blueprint? The designer designed the blueprint. And designed well, yeah, that's what we're arguing about. But, I mean, I want you to just stop using those analogies because they're fallacious. Okay. Are you saying, could it be that the designer designed the human DNA and the chimpanzee DNA. Sure. I entertain the possibility. I'm just telling okay. you that the evidence is pointing against it. And, I'm they, not and they, both, a, no, they both broke at the same place. Yeah, so tell me, I want you to explain to me, if, if the fall of man is what caused this, was there a fall of apes? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain. There's suffering in the whole creation. Yes, Adam's fall affected the entire creation. Lambs had to die for them to be clothed. Uh, yeah, the whole okay, fine, fine. But explain to me why exactly 
chimps and humans have exactly the same broken gene. Okay, first of all, I, I, vitamin C. I first of all, I don't know that they do. I'm taking they your do. word this on this. This is fact, Kent. This is scientific okay. fact, and you can go look it up yourself. I, I will. Claiming. I will. But first of all, I'm still going to question that strongly because I don't think man knows as much about the DNA as you think he does. Uh, I think that it's, it's the genetics is in its infancy, but I don't think that we're just shooting in the dark here. We're, we're looking at, at actual specific pieces of data. Okay. If you put a five-year-old under the hood of your car and say, take out whatever it doesn't need, he's going to take it all out. Okay. He doesn't know what it needs. It, it's a lack of his understanding. What on earth is this, you know, EGR valve? I don't know. Pull it out. You know, what's a spark plug for? I don't, I don't know. see what your analogy has to do with anything. We're talking about sophisticated no, equipment to, that can, they can... I'm trying to point out to you that you... DNA. you you have this grandiose idea that modern man is so smart and knows everything about the DNA, and we no, don't. No, I didn't say knows everything about the DNA. I'm saying that we have sequencing equipment that can pull in the DNA into a computer and look at it on a screen. Well, you know how computers are. Garbage in, garbage out. You can oh, come it. on, Kent. Is this really your excuse for, for Dr. Uh, this point? I'm telling you that you need to stop and smell the coffee 